What's up folks, Gorilla Radio episode 23. Today we're gonna to be talking about the in-body 570 scanner. So this is something we picked up a couple of months ago. So we're gonna give some context behind why we have it and what we're gonna use it for. I'll do a quick demo of how we use it and then I'll zoom in and we'll show you how we break down the result sheet which is right there on that poster, okay? So, um, in everything we do at this gym, in all of our weight loss work or all of our fitness work, we need to first get a good picture of where we start. And so we've used a lot of tools in the past. There's other tools on the market uh, that can help understand body fat and body composition, but they're very inaccurate, they're very inconsistent. And so when we came across the InBody, we, we just got it, we knew we had to have it. So uh, this company actually started using these in-body scanners in uh, bariatric centers. And what they ended, ultimately did was created smaller versions for you know someone like me that can buy one. Uh, not just at a hospital setting. So what effectively this does is uses bioelectrical impedance, which is a technology that exists in other things, but not to this accuracy and to this degree. So effectively what it's helping us measure is water content in the body. And by understanding water content, we can then differentiate lean body mass, water, and then fat. Okay, so lean body mass being our muscles, um, water being water, and then fat being fat. So we can differentiate, pull up some percentages, gives us an incredible breakdown of what and where all that stuff is stored to help us make better decisions. So it's just another way to peek under the hood so that we can figure out where you are and where you need to be going. And nothing's gonna be more accurate and more consistent. This is actually 98% as accurate as a DEXA scan, right? Which is the top tier when we're coming to understanding body composition. Okay, so uh, for all our members of the gym, this is a regularly built in. Every three months, we're gonna get a scan and understand how we've progressed or how we've not progressed. If you're coming in off the streets, just wanna try it out, we offer that as well if you wanna get a good scan in. Okay, and we'll go over the results with you. So I'm gonna go through the process to scan. I'll kind of speed it up as you walk, so you don't have to watch the whole, uh, the whole thing, because um, a lot of it is just the, the machine thinking. So first and foremost, we'll have some uh, protocols, right? So you're gonna be standing up for about five minutes. Um, we try to do this at the same, roughly the same time every day. We wanna make sure you're not grossly dehydrated, right? Um, so a couple things we wanna focus on. And then we'll always have a little wipe for everybody. So we need to get the hands and the feet a little moist. That's a terrible word I know. But a light, slightly damp for uh, conductivity, right? So it's gonna send a small electrical pulse um, and it also helps fight off any sort of uh, bacteria or anything like that. So first steps first, everybody will wipe the bottoms of the feet and then the hands and we'll stand on it. Measuring your weight. Do not grab the handles or move. So typically you would take off all of your stuff as well. Weight measurement is completed. So once it gets your weight, you'll then create an ID. For us, we just have everybody use their name so that it will remember you. So what's really cool is this connects to a cloud and an app that you can use to track your progress over time uh, so you're not get starting from scratch every single time. So here I'm putting in my cell phone number, height, age, and gender. Mine's already in there from last time. Place your heels on the rear sole electrodes. And then we just follow the instructions. Grab the handles. Place your thumbs on the oval electrodes. Keep your arms straight. Your arms must not touch the sides of your body. Starting your in-body test. Do not talk or move during the test. Hopefully I expedited that a little bit for you. So then what we do is we just hop off and we're gonna immediately on the spot we get our results printed off, okay? So we'll let this print off and then uh, the next thing we'll jump right into diving into uh, the results sheet a little more specifically. All right, what's up, we're back. So 
Well, a little awkward angle, but I really wanted to zoom up on here so you guys can see this. So I'll stay out of the frame and just kind of point. So this is what we get. So the scan is about 45 seconds long and then immediately prints off our result sheet. And this is what we're gonna go over. So up top, we'll just have our basics, right? Our name, our height, our age, our gender, test date, okay? So let's start with body composition initially. So this is obviously not mine, this is just an example. But this person's weight was 130.3 pounds, okay? The lean body mass is 82.2 pounds. And the body fat mass is 48.1 pounds, okay? So you can start to really begin to see a breakdown of where's, how much of my weight is body fat, which of course we need some, right? So that's never, the percentage is what's more relevant than the actual number. So lean body mass, body fat mass, and then it's gonna start breaking down total body water, and then intracellular versus extracellular water. So water inside of our cells, obviously we need that for protein synthesis and for our body's muscles to recover from workout. And then water outside the cell, so higher extracellular water content will start to lead us or, or point towards the, the uh, dehydration phase, right? So water is being pulled out of the cells, so we're, we're showing up as a little dehydrated, so we're gonna show up differently um, on a day-to-day -day basis if you're well hydrated versus very dehydrated, okay? So we're gonna start looking at that, and this sets us a really good baseline. And what we want to know, there's specific things that we can do to break these down a little bit more. So it's one thing to just get your sheet, it's another thing to understand what's going on with your sheet. So dividing total body water into lean body mass, we want to see that number to be around 72 to 73 percent. Okay, most people are pretty consistently there, but that's an important ratio for us to understand. And so this really does break down where exactly we're holding our weight, where exactly we're holding our fat, where exactly we're holding our water. And this is a great way to compare um, before and afters. So very clinical, very technical stuff up here that's important. Uh, the next thing we do is muscle fat analysis. So straightforward, we have our weight, we have our skeletal muscle mass, right? So that is the in pounds, how much muscle we have on our bones, right? And then our body fat mass, okay? So that's in pounds. So 48 pounds um, of, those, of this person's body is fat, 43 pounds is skeletal muscle mass. So the reason why that doesn't equal 130 is of course you have water content, you have organs, and you have bone, okay? So that gives us a good breakdown there too. And the next thing is obesity analysis. So we're looking at BMI. So BMI is just a function of, it's, it's an equation, right? Kilograms divided by uh, your meters squared in height. So it's, it's what we like this here is that it gives us an illustration of how in, incomplete BMI alone is going to be, okay? So this person's BMI is 24. So 30 plus you're considered obese, 25 to 30 is overweight, under 25 is considered in the normal range. Uh, if you're active and fit and have some muscle, you're never probably gonna make your normal weight. Um, so I'd have to lose, I think, 25 pounds to be in the normal range and I don't really have any interest in losing that. So I'm more interested in the other numbers, right? So 36.9% is this person. And if you can see the gray scale versus the black scale, it's given us an ideal target range. So this person, based on age and gender, we should be under 28%. Anywhere between 18 and 28% would be considered an ideal pursuit. So obviously they're way, way high above that um, for 130 pounds. So that gives us an idea already. We know we're trying to lose 8.9 pounds of body fat, okay? Or we're dropping the percentage, 8.9% is a better way to say that. So again, good, act, good way to start, see where we are and where we need to be. Um, then this is really cool. So this is our segmental lean analysis. This breaks down right arm, left arm, trunk, right leg, left leg. And it tells us in pounds how much uh, mass is on each limb. And then below that, what's really cool is it gives us an indication of the percentage of, of muscle we need or have in order to support that limb. For instance, right arm is 4.43 pounds okay, of lean body mass. So that means that we can support 102% of our weight. We're, we're in a good ratio. We want that to be 100 or above. So we're just a little bit under on the left arm. We're pretty close in the trunk at 99.3%, but here's, here's telltale, right and left leg, only 82% of the lean tissue, the, the muscle necessary to support those limbs given how much they weigh. So this is already telling us that we might have some sort of precursor for injury if we don't do something about that. And so what's gonna be really interesting is taking someone like this and having them do a, sy a systematic um, uh, strength program over several months. Not only will we see the body fat drop, but we're also gonna see the muscle, lean muscle go up in the legs, and that percentage should rise accordingly. So that's a great way to indicate are we injury prone or are we dialed in or not. Extracellular water divided by total body water, okay? So this is a good indication of 
where we're going to be in terms of hydration. Okay, so 39% is where this is. Extracellular water, 39% of the, all the water in our body is extracellular. So again, the higher the extracellular versus intracellular, the more indica indicative of that is, uh, for dehydration. So that's a really good idea of where we're holding our water and retaining our water. And especially women, depending on the time of the month, we can see that fluctuate significantly as well. What's really cool down here is how we track it. So uh, hopefully it's not too far cut off, but you have the date right below. But then this will give you, so this is someone that's done three, six, you know, eight sessions. And you can start to see these lines being connected. So they've lost, you know, 13.8 pounds. The skeletal muscle mass has gone down a little bit. Um, that will also be a function of seeing hydration levels fluctuate as well, okay? Uh, percent body fat went from 41.3 to 36.9. And then extracellular water dropped from 39% to 39.9% to 39.6%. So that, we usually see that stay pretty consistent over time, all right? So, this is a great, every time you do one, you print it off and you'll see where you're, where you're progressing. So what's really cool, the reason why we bought the more advanced version as opposed to the basic version is one very specific number, and that is our visceral fat level. So visceral fat is fat in and around our organs. And what that's going to do for us is tell us where, if we're, if we're uh, more prone to, to disease, metabolic syndrome. So the more fat I have in and around my organs, the more I need to be paying attention um, to dropping those levels. And I want that number to be under 10. And this is centimeters squared. So this gives us a, a squared centimeters, I have you know, 12 square centimeters of fat in and around my visceral organs. That's very important. We need to drop that number down to 10. Okay, so this is a good indication of that. Our basal metabolic rate, how many calories you would burn laying in bed all day long. We want to know what that is so we can have an intelligent conversation about macronutrient ratios and total caloric burn. And then we break down here our segmental fat analysis, goes back to our trunks and our limbs, but in a percentage number. Okay? And then this gives us goals to shoot for. So this person, they're saying, let's decrease our body fat mass by 21.8 pounds. Let's increase our lean body mass by 5.5 pounds. A great way to really get an understanding of where we are. Okay? So without this kind of technology, zoom out a little bit, it's imperative that we get this kind of look, right? So just using a handheld device or just using a scale is a very incomplete picture. We want to get as big of a uh, robust information as we possibly can so we make better decisions. All right? That's what the InBody is. Any other questions, drop them in the comments. We'll get to them. Thanks for watching.